Okay, so we're going to work today on converting different types of units. And in the textbook, this is section 9.4 and 9.5. I want to go, first of all, doing U.S. customary to metric and vice versa, back and forth to the same. Basically, what you need to do, because I won't give them to you on the test or the quiz, is you need to memorize a couple of common conversion facts that are used quite a bit. Okay, so um, if you learn that an inch is 2.54 centimeters, you can do any of the conversions that you need between feet, yards, inches, <coughs> and typically meter as well as centimeter, not just so you need to have this memorized so that you can do 2.54 centimeters. All right, and then you need to memorize that um, if you look in your book, they use different ones. And there are, that's why metric to US con units can be a little bit tricky because there are a few different conversion facts that are commonly used. Um, for example, we might, you might see that um, one kilometer is 62 hundredths of a mile. That's the one that I have memorized and that I use. I have also seen that 1.61 kilometers is one mile. And what happens with that is your decimal will be slightly off. Remember, the U.S. customary system and the metric system or the um, SI system, the standard international system, they're incompatible. So they're always going to involve rounding. All right, so this is the conversion fact that your textbook gives. This is the one that I've memorized. Um, you may use either one. Um, on the test, I, will, I have two possible answers. <laughs> so that it, you can use either conversion fact. To me, I like this one because one of the most important things that you're gonna, we're gonna go over in just a minute too is relating the English or the US customary system to the metric system. And for me, when I want to do a very quick calculation, I remember that a kilometer is about 5 eighths of a mile. So in that way I can do a quick in my head conversion between miles and kilometers because that's a very, very common conversion. And you can see why I like the 6-2 because I can remember that. Okay, it's not quite 5 eighths of a mile, <clears throat> but it's pretty close. So um, make sure you get a conversion unit that you are comfortable with. Um, so sometimes there's more than one way to get from miles to kilometer. So that's why there's always a little bit of leeway when you're doing US customary to metric units. All right, so you've got to know this one. I would prefer you learn that one. If you'd use the others, that's fine. We well, can't use that one, it's too proximate. But that's for in your head about how many miles is X number of kilometers, etc. So you need to know inch to centimeter, kilometer to mile. Then you also need to know um, liters to quarts. One liter, you can see the book, one in the textbook is one liter is approximately 1.06 quarts or one and six hundredths of a quart. Look how close liter and quart are. They're very close. In fact, they're close enough you can almost, for rough estimation, you can use one or the other. That's for rough estimation. Like this is rough estimation. Um, it seems to me that the book goes back and forth between different ways. Sometimes they go liter to quart, sometimes they go quart to liter. This is the one that I memorized. And so obviously I like it better. You may use either one. To me, this is two digits. This is three. I prefer that. So what, I, what you do need to realize is that 
court and leader are very close in value. So when we're doing a just quick in my head approximation, we can use one or the other. But when we're doing a conversion, we need to use either one of these and we need to have the idea in our mind that leader is roughly comparable to a quart. Okay. All right, then you'll notice that in the book they give you a gallon to liter conversion. In my mind, that's not necessary. You can go gallons to four quarts and then do the quarts conversion. I like to keep it down to three or four basic metric conversions for me to memorize, and then I can do most of your practical U.S. customary to metric conversions. What would be the remaining one? Pounds to, what? Weight, yes, pounds to kilograms. And um, what's larger, a kilogram or a pound? Kilogram. So if you want to look like you lost weight, give your weight in kilograms. It'll, it'll look odd, okay? But that is one that you have to memorize, and this one I've only seen this conversion fact. This is very common. One kilogram is about, all of these are approximate. All of these are approximate. Um, but I did use approximate here because this is really rough. These are the accepted conversion factors. They are all approximate, but those are the ones that we will use. Kilograms to pounds, liters to quart, kilometer to mile, inch to centimeter. There are other ones you can use. Uh, a gallon is about 3.79 liters, but I don't think you want to be memorizing all these odd things. You do need to memorize these four, and you need to have them in your brain for future use, because I won't give them to you on the quizzes and so forth. A rule of thumb with rounding with metric to U.S. customary conversions is usually you will round to the hundredths place because most of our conversion facts are to the hundredths place. So on the um, conversion quiz that you need to take by Friday, two things. If I ask for approximation, round to the nearest hole. If I ask for just a regular conversion, round to the hundredth, and you may use a calculator. You will see those same instructions in the quiz itself, but it seems like sometimes you don't read the instructions. <laughs> but use a calculator. I know you won't forget that, which is common when you're doing conversions, you're gonna be using a calculator because it's a lot of decimal math and we're doing it kind of as an application problem anyways. So basically the quiz for Friday is conversion applications from a little bit of chapter eight, the power conversions, and then all of chapter nine. There are no metric to metric conversions in there. We already did that. Okay, so we're gonna be mostly dealing with, um, I think it's eight six, the power conversions, and then nine four and nine five, okay, on the quiz. The test will cover all of measurements. Okay, so the measurement test has a review of the U.S. customary unit conversions, the metric to metric conversions on it, and also these other special conversion applications that we are doing. All right, so let's go ahead and begin with metric to U.S. conversions and vice versa. As I said, it's gonna begin with you memorizing these four basic conversion facts and being able to use them in application problems um, for the quiz and for the test. So keep in mind that U.S. customary units, the U.S. customary units, and the metric system, or the um, SI, Standard Interna uh, IS, yeah, standard international units are incompatible. All right, and keep in mind on the test, 
that when we do U.S. customary units, what do we do with remainders? How are these problems done? They're done with fraction math. Remainders are fractions. They're involving compounds. So all of that you need to be able to do. So these are completely incompatible. Then the metric system, we are doing decimal math only. And keep this rule in mind. No compounds. Application problems, we don't use compounds. And we don't mix and match our units. Obviously, we never mix and match units in the same application problem. Always go to the larger unit. Always go to the larger unit with, of course, a decimal. This is completely decimal based. And with this, we're going to be usually rounding to the nearest hundredth place all the time. Here, we, do, we are forced to use compounds or mixed numbers. Okay, you could convert it to a mixed number and do the fraction math, but this, as you know, is clumsy and it's incompatible with the scientific metric system. So as you are doing these, keep those things in mind. But then, even though the metric system involves decimal points, sometimes it's difficult. You don't have to try to decide off the top of your head, am I going to multiply or am I going to divide by the conversion fact? You can still use dimensional analysis, remember, as it's called, with cancellation of units. So um, on the um, metric quiz that you just took, I asked you how much does, what was the weight? 175 pound man weigh, okay. So how much does a 175 pound man weigh? Okay. We know the conversion fact is that we have it, in, you should already have it in your mind that kilograms are smaller or larger than pounds. Kilograms are larger. Oh, let's do this. Kilograms are larger because it takes 2.2 pounds to equal approximately one kilogram. So this guy's weight is gonna be cut approximately in half. And so even if you don't wanna think through that entire process because you can use dimensional analysis. 175 pounds over one can be converted out this way. Even though it's gonna to have to involve decimals, you can still use this cancellation of units technique so that you know I have to divide by 2.2, not multiply by it. All right, as you are the teacher and as you are older and more experienced with math, you most likely would not make that mistake. You wouldn't multiply by 2.2 because you'd have a ridiculously large number. Okay, right? But if you're going to be teaching this, you can, you can you let your students see this. They don't have to sit and try to remember. We don't have to try to remember which one's bigger. We can use this to tell us that our 175 pound man weighs what? What does he weigh? Several, most of you, several of you got this. I don't remember if everybody did. How much does he weigh? What'd you get? 79.54 What's that? 79.54 Okay, 79.54545454. Okay, so then we will round to the nearest hundred. Oops, not pounds. We are going kg. So that makes sense. Basically, a 175 pound man weighs 80 kilos, as it would commonly be called, correct? So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, that's about 80 pounds. And for most purposes, that's a close enough conversion. So on the quiz, I'm going to say about how much does a 175 pound man weigh? And you're going to say about 80 pounds. 
and then I will ask you for the actual amount rounded in the nearest hundredth. Okay? You'll see that on the quiz. But we can always use this technique, cancellation of units, to help remind ourselves or to help find out, do I divide or do I multiply by the 2.2? So you need to be able to very, by this stage, be able to easily convert between kilometer, not kilometers, <laughs> kilograms and pounds, and yes, kilometers and miles, feet to meters is another one. If we were to be talking about the dimensions of this blackboard, what would it be in? Meters. Not decimeters, nobody uses that. I don't think. Not centimeters, centimeters would be too small. It would be in meters, correct? Um, people's height. Children's height in the metric system is in centimeters. What about adults? In meters, correct? All right, so let's start with Morgan. Morgan, how tall are you in metric? We'll start with you since you're round. How tall is Morgan in meters? Let's get an approximation just off the top of our heads. She's going to be roughly two meters tall, correct? When you are doing conversions, you want to have a rough idea of the compatibility. So let's take a second and stop for a minute and let's go through the idea of length. Let's have a good idea in our minds and let's teach our students a good idea in our minds about comp uh, how comparable the U.S. customary system is to the metric system. We should know by now that these two units are used for the same purposes, correct? Kilometer in the metric, miles in U.S. customary. We should also know that meters replace feet. Um, how, much is, how much do we use yards in the United States? Fabric, fencing, what else? Part oh, football, I forgot about football. We do use, we do have some sports, um, track and field. What do we used to use in track and field? 100 yard dash, do we do that anymore? No, now it's 100 meters and they're pretty close anyway. So pretty much the yard is actually being phased out. Um, as far as construction and things like that, we use feet. But we know, of course, that three feet is a yard. So most of the time we're going to be converting between meter and feet. I didn't give you a meter to feet um, conversion. There is one, one meter is approximately 3.28 feet because a meter is larger than a yard. You've all seen a meter stick versus a yard stick. We, you should have in your mind that a meter is about 39 some inches. 39 point, who cares about the decimal at this stage. We just have, need to have a good idea in our mind of how the metric system and the U.S. customary, how they compare. They certainly don't line up very well, but how do they compare? And you need to teach this. The, the problem with the metric system in the United States and in schools is because we are not familiar with it. So let's start making it familiar, all right, and start being able to use it. I don't know if I told you, but there was a big push in the 1970s to convert the United States to the metric Everybody was up in arms. Nobody wanted to convert because it would take time and effort and thinking, wouldn't it? It's really too bad we didn't. But anyways, so we need to have that in our mind. That most things that would normally be in feet, we are going to convert to meters. Same with yards. Okay? Um, they, do, they also gave us a yard one. But to me, we start getting, we start to be splitting hairs here. 
here's the yard measurement. I don't even know them. I have to look at them. There they are. But I think it's much easier to boil it down to the four that I told you to memorize. All right, so about how tall is Morgan? Well, we know feet um, and meter. Of course, a yard is 36 inches. So we can kind of mentally convert that to yards. How many yards? Exactly two, right? So she's going to be a little less than two meters tall. But now let's do the actual conversion. Six feet. Now, I don't have these memorized. So if I'm going to do this, I am going to go to, I'm going to go through what? I'm going to go through inches. 6 times 12 is 72. So I can get the actual amount using the cancellation of units. I know that an inch is bigger. That's the other thing. What about? Um, centimeters being comparable to inches. You've probably seen that, probably noticed rather that people's rulers are calibrated both in inches and centimeters and meters. Okay, so if you picture that in your mind, you know that you look at the little inch and there's going to be more than two, in fact about two and a half centimeters in each inch on the other side of your ruler. So I need to realize that centimeter is less than an inch. It takes about two and a half of them. Okay? So that way I can have an idea of how the two systems compare, even though they don't convert very easily. And we're always going to be rounding. And we always have these pesky hundredths place. All right, so what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply 72 inches times 2.54 centimeters. I'm setting up my cancellation of units. So this is still approximate. How many centimeters is that? What'd you get? 182 and 88 hundredths. All right. What's the conversion between centa to meter? How many places? Two. Centa is 100. So we would move the decimal two places. 1.83. I'm rounding up because of the other extra eights. So she's about two meters tall, really 1.83 meters. Okay. All right. Um, Maggie, how tall are you? 5'10. I used to be 5'10. Commonly speaking, we use compounds, don't we? Oops. But when I'm going to, so Maggie's going to be maybe a meter and a quarter, meter and three quarters. What do you think? Approximately 1.75 meters, which is still two meters tall. But what are we going to do here? We're going to go to inches. And I'm just going to do. And when we're, when we're doing our metric to U.S. customary and back and forth conversions in our classes, we need to do this a lot and we need to make it fun and we need to make it understandable. We need to understand the relationships here. We need to boil it down to four conversion units for them to memorize, not all these oddball things. Okay. If you had to do some more scientific and uh, sophisticated computations, you'd be able to look up the exact conversion on some type of table and certainly on the internet. Okay? So I am going to do the same thing. 2.54 centimeters 
is roughly equivalent to an inch. So how tall is Maggie? How tall are you, Maggie? Um, 177.8. 177 point what? Eight. Centimeters. So we are converting now to meters by moving it two places. So 1.78. Pretty close. Okay. So all of us are less than two meters tall. Even Morgan. Okay, so let's not make a big deal about the metric system in sixth grade and even fifth grade. We can start doing things that are fun. We can do problem solving things, even if it's not a part of our particular lesson that day. All right, so when we are converting US customary units to the standard international, the first thing we want to do is have an idea of what we're working with, which units are comparable to which units. And then basically, I think you can do all of these by learning one inch is about 2.54 centimeters and then you can do pretty much all of the length conversions. Though keep in mind, oh and also we want to use the kilometer. One, these two. Kilometer and mile are way too big. So those two. Oh, before we leave these, we need to be able to convert speed, don't we? Okay, well, let's do some speed computations. You drive into Canada, right? You drive into Canada, and you're going down the interstate in the middle of nowhere. You might see the sign that looks like this. Right? It's been a while since I've been in Canada and I can't quite picture the speed limit signs in my mind. It seems like they had a circle around, were they red? No, just a circle with a number in them. Do they have KM or KPH? There KPH. KPH. All right, how fast is that? Well, that's pretty easy. We know our conversion fact. How about this? So I want, it's in kilometers per hour, and I need it in miles per hour. I don't have to worry about the hour. I'm just going to keep the hour. I can just keep the hour. Scoot it over here out of the way. And I know that one kilometer is about five-eighths of a mile. Or I could think, oh yeah, one kilometer is five-eighths of a mile, and I can get kind of an approximation there. How fast is this? If it's five-eighths, it's going to be right around 75 miles per hour. And you'd only see this out in the middle of nowhere on an interstate. I don't, well, actually, I don't know how liberal Canada is with its speed limits. You know, back in the 70s, 80s, and so forth, there was a big push to do 55. Why were all U.S. highways, you know, dropped down in speed to 55? It was supposed to save gasoline and blah, 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 blah. So, not for speed safety. Anyways, I don't know how Canada is with that. But, so, how fast is this? It's 77.5. Well, if I'm on an interstate in the middle of nowhere, I'm probably going faster than that, depending on the uh, state of the vehicle. New vehicle, big engine, look down and I'm going 85. Whoops. All right, so 125 is roughly 75 miles per hour, something you would expect to see on a cross 
continental interstate. You wouldn't see that in high traffic areas, of course. What would happen if I used my other conversion? What if I used one mile is 1.61 kilometers? Well, first of all, I would have to divide, and I don't want to divide, but if I'm using a calculator, I really don't care, right? What do you, when you get this, when you do this, you're going to get 77.6 MPH. Not a whole lot of difference, okay? So, it be much easier for you if you use 0.62 then I'll know why, uh, well, if your decimal is off slightly, I'll know you probably used a different conversion factor. Right, can you do metric to English conversions? Do you have an idea about the relationships between your commonly used metric units and how they relate to the U.S. customary? Um, even in fourth grade, they have to learn the hierarchy. Let's do length hierarchy with both units. What is the largest commonly used length measurement in either system? The mile, right? So we have the mile, we need to learn the hierarchy. We have the mile, and then pretty close to that is the kilometer. What's next? Way down here, the meter. And right Next to it, slightly below it, is a yard. Remember, this is 39, this is 36. Pretty close. Especially when you're dealing with large distances and in, when you're dealing in generalities. All right, then we have the foot. Then we have the inch. Then we have the centimeters. And down here is the millimeter. Pretty much, these are the only length units in common usage. Miles with, or kilometers, meters with either yard or foot, then inch with centimeter, and then the smallest measurement is millimeter, and this again is why we have to convert to metric when we are doing science computations. Inch is too big. Speaking of science computations, in physics class, when we are doing acceleration and velocity problems, and even in high school physical science, we don't do miles per hour. What do we use? Feet per second. We don't do kilometers per hour. What do we use? Meters per second. So we have to be able to convert between those. Let's start with the US system. Back to 55 miles per hour. When I'm doing an acceleration problem or a velocity problem for maybe momentum or acceleration and so forth, I have to, especially if I'm doing momentum or force computations, I can't use miles per hour. The unit's too big. I have to go feet per second. So I need to be able to convert from miles per hour to feet per second. I'm still using US units, but and here again, I need to be able to cancel the units to help me through the problem. I want to retain feet, so the 5,280 feet equals one mile. In the first fraction, shows me that I'm going to multiply the miles times the feet. Okay, that's going to give me, what, 29,000, no, 290,400. But then I also have to, I want feet per second. So I can do numerous kinds of computations for physical science and physics by using this dimensional analysis or cancellation of units technique. Um, there are 3,600 seconds in an hour, right? There's 60 seconds in a minute. 60 minutes in an hour, 60 squared is 3,600. And right away, we're going to get, if we just do this multiplication, we do get 290,400.
we can cancel out the extra zeros and end up dividing uh, 2,904 by 36. Either way, we get approximately 80.67 feet per second. It's actually 666, so it's 80 and two-thirds. Um, many times in high school level, you would just use 81 feet per second. Other computations, you may need it to be more... Oh, do you remember the fun discussion in junior high math or science or even high school physical science? Precision versus accuracy. If it needs to be more precise, then you would have to go with a certain number of decimal places. Otherwise, um, you can just use 81. All right, what if I need to do kilometers per hour? Just like we don't use miles per hour in U.S computations involving acceleration, velocity, or momentum, we can't use kilometers per hour either. So let's say I'm going 80 kph. I can't use that computation either. I have to use meters per second in the metric system. Remember our SI units. The base unit for science computations is the meter. I cannot use the kilometer. So I have to not only convert out of kilometers, I still have to com convert out of hours. So the kilometer to meter is pretty easy. How many meters in 80 kilometers? A lot. 80,000. Three places. All right, so this is going to be giving me 80,000 meters in one hour. So then I will divide that down by the needed 3,600 seconds because I want my hours to cross cancel. So you can see I end up dividing here. So what is 800 divided by 36? Who's got it? 800 divided by 36, Maggie. 22.22. 22. Pardon me? 22.22. Keeps going with the twos? Okay, we keep going with the twos. So, 22, roughly 22 meters per second. And in high school, 22 might be good enough. Not good enough, precise enough. Thank you.